Hello everyone and welcome to another LSE Transfer Room stream. Half past seven on a Thursday night without the uh, Europa League football, which is nice again, as I did last week. But it is the end of international break, I'm sure. I know they might not look as happy right now with Reese and Paul, but I'm sure they're delighted inside that um, international break is over and proper football is back, ladies and gentlemen. Sunday, we play Brighton just before the big game between Man City and Arsenal. But we're starting off tonight with... Um, Xabi Alonso, boys, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but a um, bit of contradictory news in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the news space today, and that was one from the Bayern, Bayern Munich executive, uh, Ulai, I forget, Ulai Unes. He says, I feel that like it will be very difficult to sign Alonso. Probably impossible, he said. But then there was another, another report out a little bit earlier on saying that there was a deal final. Uh, finalising deal mm. behind the scenes between Liverpool and Xabi Alonso. Believe what you want to believe, boys. First of all, put a race. which one do you believe the most? Is Xabi Alonso probably impossible or do you think there is a deal getting done uh, Alonso? Um, I like to think it's possible. It's very possible. For me, nothing's impossible. But what I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to listen to the media right now because we've got a season going on and he's got a season going on with Bayer Leverkusen. So, one minute it's going to be he's linked to us, next minute it's not because obviously um, there's reporters that have agendas because they work for different teams and stuff. So I'm not really trying to read too much into it because, like I said, we don't decide. We've got to wait till the end of the season. But I'm leaning more towards him than against and then not having Alonso. It seems like the chat the, ch the chat between out between us guys, LSE Transfer Room, it seems mm. to be like we're happy when it's a link to us and we're like, oh yeah, definitely believe that. But when it's a link to Bayern Munich, it's like, nah, it's just it's it's, it's it's nonsense, it's nonsense. When really there's gonna be there's gonna be links all the way through until the of end course, of the season. Until so there's actually something cemented in place, Paul. <laughs> Which side are you are you, are you on Reese's side where you are thinking that it's gonna happen with Lonzo now? Do you think it's inevitable or do you think there's gonna be another twist in the tail? Another Bellingham? Well, I think it's gonna happen. And I also think that the clubs, the clubs to me in both Liverpool and, and Leverkusen, um, I think they know. Um, my suspicion is, well, I think Liverpool know either way. Um, I think if, they are, if he's coming or he's not, I think having played for the club and being a professional he is, whilst he wouldn't come out and make any public statement in the middle of the season because you know they are focused on trying to win the Bundesliga. But he's such a professional and he, knowing that Liverpool needs time to plan, you know, there are other managers that are out there. So if we're not going to get him, then we need time to, to pursue somebody else. I think he would have quietly given the, give Liverpool the, his word. You know, listen, guys, I'm coming, but no announcement until end of April or end of, end of the season, or I think I'm going to stay, or whatever it is. But I am pretty sure that... Um, all the parties concerned um, know what's going to happen. As it relates to all of these reports, um, I see Plettenberg a couple of weeks ago says he's going to Bayern. That's that's um, guaranteed. And now I see the same report that is kind of backtracking. I try, I've learned, I've been burnt so much. I've tried to follow in all of these transfers over the last couple of years that I'm kind of just, you know what? Let's take all of these reports with a grain of salt. These reporters, they have to put out these, these um, articles because this is how they get paid. You know, they need to stay relevant. They need to get clicks because, let's face it, they have their, their families to feed just like us, you know. So um, the fact is, I don't think they know that talking about the reporters. But I'm fairly confident that the important people being the clubs and, the, and, uh, and Zabi um, have already know what's going to happen. And even Bayern, if you notice, Bayern is now hedging and saying, you know what, we don't know if it's coming, but we look at alternative. You start to hear a deserving name popping up as a possible alternative if we don't get Zabi. That sounds to me as well that like Bayern kind of get the feeling, whether they were told directly or just by the feeling they're getting that he's not coming to them, that they kind of know that he's coming to Liverpool. So until it's done, it's not done. But at this moment, as I'm sitting here today, I have a strong feeling that he's coming. I think the, the advice I can give fans right now is just 
ride the wave. Because right now the wave is not crashing anytime soon. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating because obviously there's going to be speculation. Obviously it's going to be talked about within the chat. It's going to be talked about online. It's going to be talked about on social media. But we've got to remember that, like Paul just said, these journalists have got the job to do. They've got families to feed. And, and Florian Plettenberg, what he's doing right now is covering every base. He's making sure he's right with whichever way he goes. And fair play to him. In fact, if that's the way he wants to be and that's the way he wants to do his journalism, then fair enough. He's paying his, you know, he's paying him money, so fair play. But I like to, you know, be straight up with you guys and make sure we can get to the real the real answers. I won't, I won't cover both bases. Either that side, it's either Alonso's going to buy Munich or he's not. I won't say, it's, you know, the way Plattenberg has worded that out, but it's clicks, isn't it, Paul and, and Reese? It's clicks, and that's what journalists do, especially with Twitter at the moment, you get paid for the things that you put on, you post, you put on, so they could put anything on it and hopefully they get the clicks and, and, the, and the money that <coughs> comes with it. Um, Amarim's another candidate as well that has been um, floating around. Obviously, David Arnstein's come out again today and said Amarim's a candidate. So that's a very reliable source there with, with, with David Arnstein. I, I think Amarim's been very disrespected. Amarim has been very disrespected within the Liverpool fan base in recent weeks. Everyone's just, everyone's. Just, I think everyone's just eyes, eyes on on Lonzo, good enough for Alonso and saying, "Ah, oh, Amari's not good enough." But we don't know if Alonso's good enough. This is the, this is the thing. They're both going to be stepping up. What I see them both as is both of them are overachieving what they've got. And Amari has done it for a couple of years now with Sporting Lisbon, and he overachieved in the Europa League. He knocked out Arsenal last season in the Europa League. So I think he needs to be a bit more respected than no, than what he's getting. Reece, would you would you be happy with Amarim if it wasn't Alonso? Is he your second choice? Yeah, hundred percent. He's my second choice. So if, oh, ideally, I want Alonso, but if not, I'll take him. I don't know too much about him, but what I do know, he is doing a good job. Obviously, a lot of people say it's the Portuguese league, so um, they might not rate it. But um, yeah, he would be my second. I think he's quite a database that I was reading or something like that. Um, which means potentially that's why Edwards or someone could lean, lean towards him. But yeah, I rate him as a manager, even though he's inexperienced. Well, Alonso's inexperienced, isn't he? Yeah, really, exactly. really exactly. anyone that we're going to go for right now mm. is not Klopp. Yeah, exactly. This is good. Yeah. You know, they're not, not going to live up to. They might live up to Klopp, but you know, the expectation is not to live up to Klopp right well, it's now. It's going to take time anyway. Yeah, it so is. Be true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can't just for uh, Alonso, and then that's it. And we're, gonna, we're, not, we're not going to be happy if it's not Alonso. Paul, what, what's your thoughts on Amarim? Are you happy with Amarim? I, I, think, I think the reason Amarim is getting so much disrespect is primarily because most Liverpool supporters just cannot see beyond um, Zabi Alonso. So for too many of us, it's Zabi Alonso or nothing. Mm. But the world doesn't work like that. We all agree that we want Zabi. But if he doesn't come, Klopp is still leaving. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> still, someone needs and to you come still in, have yeah. to get somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You still have to get a manager. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also firmly believe that if we don't get Alonso, um, all the other managers that we are linked to would be more than happy to be offered a job by Liverpool. Be it uh, the Zerbi, who I don't want, by the way, be it um, Amarim or any of the others that we have been linked to, they'll be more than happy to come to Anfield. I don't mind Amarim. He's not my second choice, actually. But, it, you know, I guess being a Liverpool supporter for so many years, it, you know, it doesn't matter who it is, we're going to support the club because he's our yeah. club. But I don't know. I have been... This guy, Nagelsmann, I think, would be a decent candidate. What I don't want, Damon, I don't want any of those old guys, those mm. Jose Mourinho, anybody from that ilk. I don't yeah. want another 60, 62-year-old manager. I like, you know, Amorim, I think he's like 38, 39. Zabi is just in his early 40s. That's the kind of profile that I want. Because our team is very young. Take out Salah and, 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 um, and Verge. Our team is extremely young and talented. Um, we want somebody that is young, refreshing, bright, and have um, good ideas. So I, I don't mind Amorim, but I agree he hasn't been really tested because Portuguese league is, it doesn't have the pressure that is in the Premier League. And especially to come to Anfield, where you are expected to not only 
compete, but to win, compete at the top of the table. When you have giants like Arsenal, um, City, United might be coming back, Chelsea is spending money like crazy. Plus, you know, you have European competition that you're expected to win. So it's a lot of pressure at Anfield. So, but anybody we get is gonna be is gonna be a risk. <laughs> you know, we just have to accept that fact. There is no short thing that is out there anymore. You know, if somebody like Thomas Tuchel, which I really don't want, but he's very experienced, but even him would be a risk. So I wouldn't mind Amarim or Nagelsmann if we don't get um, Zabi Alonso. Any one of those two will work, but I would slight the edge Nagelsmann. Again, he's a young and progressive coach. Um, I think he lost his last job. It was a little bit early. Maybe it was a little bit too brash for, for mm. them. But look what he has done to this German side in the last couple of months. <laughs> you know, before... The playing got the playing got yes, the right. You know, he dropped some of the old guys, mm. um, you know, and refreshed the midfield, you know, bring back Tony Cruz. And all of a sudden, you know, they look like they are a force in the Euros coming up. So, yeah. you know, as I said, if we don't get Zabi, we'll still be okay. Mm. But we need Zabi. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so what's the manager of the oh, no, said here? Um, basically the, the news is that uh, there was a report it's a very very unreliable source so it's Football Inside that's come out with this and that is there are talks going on dis discussing behind closed doors and the finalising the deal between Liverpool and Alonso I don't believe that for one second and we're just going to put that report out there but I don't believe it for one second however um, U U I think Ulay Unes for Bayern Munich, his next executive at Bayern Munich says the deal for Zabi Alonso leaving Leverkusen looks pretty much impossible. He said he expects him to stay at Leverkusen for another a season at least. So it is, it is, it literally is going to be just, just go with it, guys, Liverpool fans. I'll just go with it. Whatever happens, happens at this point, I think. Um, as long as, as long as uh, this name doesn't come up, oh, oh <laughs> then, um, then I'm happy, whatever happens, if I'm honest. I definitely, um, definitely don't want Southgate from the comment below. Definitely don't want no Southgate. No way I'm having Southgate. Never, never. That's my United's, oh. that's my United's loss. Yeah, um, let him go to Man United, yeah. yeah. Uh, Shashin says here, yeah, Nagelsmann is a good shot. Paul, what's the pound spot on Nagelsmann? Um, Paul, again, Paul said Nagelsmann's his second choice. Reese, how high do you put Nagelsmann on your, on your list of, of, of... No, I rate him. He's in the mix. I rate him as a manager. Obviously, he's a young manager like how most of them are, but I, I rate him. I feel when he was at Bayern, he didn't get enough time, but it's because it's Bayern. The expectations are like through the roof, but I, I rate him as a manager. He's quite a progressive manager. I like him. It's it's hard to buy him because you expect it to win the league. It's a bit like PSG. Exactly. You expect it to win the league, and you if you don't win actually everything. win the league, yeah. once, it's a sackable yeah. offence. Mm. Which is mad in the terms of in terms of football. That's absolutely mad. There's not mm. many countries in the world that you look at and think if you don't win that league, you're sacked. Yeah. And right, even right. like even even Salzburg are getting you know a little bit of a push now and then from like Rapid Vienna or Lask or you know even let's go into the I'm trying to think of a league that's normally one sided. Um, Olympiakos are getting pushed by PA, uh, AK Athens and PK Salonika and, and Panathinaikos sometimes. So. It's a bit harsh on Nagelsmann that he got sacked by him. Again, it's the high expectations. If you don't win the league, it's not good enough. But they're not going to win the league this season at, the, at, the, at this stage. You know, is that is that a sackable offence again? Just because Bayern was did better this season? Well, um, two clubs been sacked already. It's just, it's, it's just. Oh like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good anyway. But what I'm saying is, you know yeah. what I'm saying though. Like, does it is it yeah. deserved a sackable offence just because Leverkusen are doing a little bit better this season? You know. I think Bayern Munich are a, a very, a very harsh side with them. I get, I get it that you should be winning that league no matter what, but I think there's going to be times where they're not going to win the league. And that's the problem, just with, the problem, the problem with, with Bayern in the Bundesliga is because they're so powerful, they're so strong, they have so much money. For the la they have been winning the league for the last decade or so on by poaching the best players from the other clubs. So they go to all the other clubs, pay them more money, and poach the best players. Yeah. yeah. And point, you know, they not only expect to win, but they expect to win a camp and you know, 
because that's not they're supposed to win, <laughs> you know. So it, it's really not fair, but that's just how it is in, in Germany. So I, I, I don't know. Um, so that is why they want um, Zabi, because who is this guy that come in and turn the Bundesliga upside down, mm. undefeated in Europe? And he's not a Bayern coach. We need to fix that, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> if it's money, I think that Zabi will go to Bayern if it's just money because nobody will outspend Bayern to get him. But I just have a feeling that he may choose Liverpool because it's a better it's a better um, option. Yeah, yeah, you know, right if it doesn't come, it must be something weird that maybe like his wife and kids say, you know what, you want to stay in school in Germany, something like that. But from a footballing point of view, we are the best option, hands down. Mm. It's a, it's, a, it's a funny job to take up because everyone's going to look at the Jurgen Klopp and think, wow, that is not a, that is not the shoes I really want to jump in right now. Especially the managers that we're looking at. It's, you know, it's very, very we're, looking, we're not even looking at really experienced managers. Not even Zidane, like someone's put Zidane in the chat. We're not, Zidane's not really come up much at all. Um, and Mar, whether it's Amory Mar, whether it's Alonso, whether it's De Zerbe, these are all inexperienced managers. So they're going to look at that job and think, that's a big. That's a big shoes to fill, but they could also be looking at the job, thinking, you know what, I'm up for this. Mm. This is the biggest challenge of my life, and I'm da- I'm down for this. And these these you got to remember, especially like Xabi Alonso, former Liverpool player, former Bayern Munich, Real Madrid player, the sportsman, and what sportsmen love is a challenge, and what they love is mm. is something you know to push themselves to the biggest limit. Alonso won't be looking at just at my Lucas thinking, oh, this is just be my level now. He's looking for higher up. He wants to be the biggest, just like he was when he was a footballer. He wants to be the biggest out there. He probably wants to be the best manager out there. So mm. it depends how that person looks at this job. Of course, we know it's going to be a big shoes to fill up. Young Klopp's the best manager I've seen in my lifetime at this club. But please, I said, whoever I said, does come I, in. Has anybody ever heard um, Amar speak? How is this English? Is it? It's pretty decent. Does he speak you know? good English? It's pretty decent. It's pretty decent enough to come to England anyway. Without Apparently, any um, he handles the media quite well as well. He's mm. been told he interacts. It just seems. Uh, well, yeah. It just seems more like Klopp than Alonso does. If that makes sense. Oh, okay, okay. Alonso seems. Uh, Alonso seems more like Benitez, I think, where he's more reserved. Re- Relax, yeah. Right, and right. He doesn't really give much away. Mm. Um, that's what Benitez were like. But Benitez has got a, a, a score last minute winner. Against by my night or something, he just got to his notepad, one and he just writes something down. <laughs> that's beneath, yeah, yeah. that's a bit more like Alonso. Yeah. Like Alonso is quite, you know, young copy running up, up and down, up and down things. So it depends what kind of, you know, I'd be happy with either, if I'm honest. I really would, because I think Amar Am- 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 does seem that kind of player, that, that kind of coach to get Liverpool, and that's what you need. Alonso will get Liverpool anyway, naturally, because he's been a Liverpool uh, fan, he's a Liverpool fan, his, his, his child was born here. But I think Amarim wouldn't take long to get Liverpool the way Klopp did, if that makes sense. So, moving on, on from uh, managers then to players. And according to Spot Zone, again, another not a very reliable source, but Inacio, Gancala Inacio was offered to Liverpool. I don't know when this was, but it was offered to Liverpool. PSG are now looking at him uh, as, as an option as well. Paul, if he was offered Liverpool, what were we doing? You know, uh, I'm not so sure I believe that, to be honest, Damon. Uh, if he was offered to Liverpool, at what price? Because this guy have a, a, um, a release clause. So once you have a release clause, you don't need to be offered to anybody. Anybody can just come in and trigger the release clause, and that's the end of the story. So if he's offered to Liverpool, that would suggest that he's offered at a price lower than his release clause, mm-hmm. right? Because other than that, it wouldn't make any sense. So, uh, you know, that's why I kind of raised my eyebrows when I, w- when I saw that, 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 that article. Because if he was offered to Liverpool for, like, say, 30, 30 to 40 million pounds, without doubt, I think they would have gobbled him up, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there's still a chance that we get him because if we get Amarim and he wants to play three at the back, then Gonzalo Inácio will be the perfect player for that, for that synapse system. And to move to the Premier League, which most, trust me, most players in the other leagues, especially in the Portuguese, the Dutch League, they, they want to come to the, to the Premier League. People, um, players in Colombia and those um, countries like Lucha Diaz, they want to, to, to play in the 
Spanish league. But I know that most of the players in the Portuguese, the Dutch league, etc., they want to come to the Premier League. So if Amarim is coming to Liverpool and there's a chance that um, in Gonzalo Inacio can come to Liverpool with him, that would be, that would be a perfect one-two for me. Because with Robbo, you know, he's one of 30, getting over the hill, he's getting a couple of injuries here or there. I, and with most of the talent that we have is now in the midfield, if we decide to switch to a 3 4 3 or 3 5 2 formation, one, to be more solid at the back, and two, to get more of our talented midfielders um, opportunities, then Inacio would be a perfect addition to the squad. So it's possible, and I would love to have him, especially if Amarim is coming. But I really am skeptical about that article about him being offered to Liverpool. Because as I said, he have a release clause. And even before his clause was, was increased at the last transfer window, he had a release clause that everybody knew of it. And anybody could have gone and trigger that release clause. So I, I don't believe that article. Reese, I saw something the other day saying, um, you know, if we take this manager, we're going to get these players as well. So basically, it's Amarim, uh, Inacio, I think, Gon- is it Goncalves as well at, at, at Spartan Lisbon? Then you got Alonso coming with um, Verts and Incapi. Okay. And then you got, I think it was Deserbi, then we've got um, Deserbi was Mitoma, I can't think of the other player that was, that was with Deserbi. Which, which way are you going with the players included? Or in terms of manager and players? And or players just, together. Uh, I'm not sure. Like I said, you can't really read too much into it because obviously it's, it's purely speculation. Obviously, uh, Anasio, I'm not sure. The same as Paul. I'm not sure if Anasio believed that. Because why is that coming out right now at this mm-hmm. moment? Um, like I said, we don't know all the details. But I think he's a good player. In terms of players, we're going to be linked with everyone because we're Liverpool. We're always linked with loads of players. Um, so... Uh, you I'm think it really... could be like agent agent talk when they, obviously the summer transfer window is mm. going to come around the corner, and if PSG is mm. interested, the agent could be like saying, "Oh, well, Liverpool want Liverpool offered him, you know, get them for Liverpool does." Yeah, to see if they can get the price up. Yeah, I, no, I agree. I agree. Like right now, I, I'm not really reading into who again because I'm I'm not even trying to think about manager. But if I think of the, out of the two, I'm more looking at manager first before we uh, sign anyone. Because like I said, because we're Liverpool, we're going to be linked to. Every player, like under the sun. Um, Andy says here, squad is stacked in every each position. Can't see anyone arriving unless someone leaves. I don't think it is as stacked as as, as you think it is, though, Andy. If I'm honest, regarding like injury 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 prone players as well. I mean, we're putting a lot of a lot of trust into these youngsters, and these youngsters are doing very well. But there's only so much game time they're going to get, and there's also only so many. You can't really rely on the youngsters that much in a season as well. So, if, if, for example, Thiago's not going to be here in the summer. Matip South is going to be, and he's gone anyway. So, that's two players leaving already. You know, Kanati is injury prone. Gomez is still injury prone, whether you like it or not. Jot has become an injury prone. Curtis Jones has become an injury prone. These have got to take into account as well. And, and with Salah, Salah's going to leave at some point. I know he's, he's still got another couple of years in, but we still need to start looking at his replacement right now. There's a possibility that Keller here leaves. Do we need another keeper? Because I'm not having Adrian as backup. I'd, yeah, rather, no have, I'd rather have a steward as backup than Adrian, if I'm honest. <laughs> so it's there's definitely gonna be a chance there's definitely got to be chances made. It's whether FSG do put the money for the new manager with the they barely put the money for if it, if the young clops are. It's it's gonna be really hard. It also depends on what the manager wants as well. If we get Alonso, we're gonna want three five two. If he does play if you just play the same system, yeah, keep the same formations where we've got now, we don't know yet. So it all depends on what manager we get in as well to suit the system. Because we might not have a player that suit that system either. Well, we we need a couple of players. Um, we definitely need another central defender. Because right now, Matip is done. And I, I mean, he has been a good servant, but at his age right now and his... Um, Injury record, it's, it would be kind of foolhardy to, to extend him. So we need a, another centre back, a young centre back, preferably a left sided centre back, because mm-hmm. then that would allow the next manager to play with three at the back if that's how he chooses to play. Because right now, 
how we are presently set up. I don't think we are good enough in terms of where we are in the defense now to switch permanently to a three at the back. Because that would mean you'd have to play Verge in the middle, Kwanzaa and um, Konati on either side of him. Mm. And then you wouldn't have anybody in reserve because Rabo is not a center back. Mm. So we would need a, another defender. So that's why Inacio would be perfect in that scenario. And I don't want Salah to leave, but he's going to go someday. He's 32. Mm -hmm. And if, he, if we want to extend, extend him in his productive career at Liverpool, then we have to seriously look at limiting his minutes, especially in the cup competition, not necessarily the Premier League. So we, we definitely need another um, right winger. And yes, we have players who can switch over there, but because I'm old school, I like my right wingers to be left-footed, <laughs> right? So I'm thinking of if we get our left-sided centre-back and a nice young left-footed right winger, say somebody like Bakayoko, which I've been singing about him for the last months, then I'll be fine. Um, I know they might want another six, but whilst I would take another six, but I think the other two positions are more crucial, right? Mm. So if we get, say... Inacio to replace Matip, and then we say bye bye to Thiago and get um, Bakayoko, assuming that we don't have any long term injuries. And then we can decide, okay, we're going to put Trent at the eight, we're going to put Trent as a double pivot. If you play three at the back, then Trent can definitely play as that wing back position where we, where we would sit beside Endo or whoever is at the six. But we definitely need, I think we need two players. And preferably, both of them should be left-footed. Because right now, our side is a little bit unbalanced. We have a lot of midfielders, but there's too much similarity. Mm. There are about seven or eight number eights. Mm. And we only have two positions. Because if you look at Curtis Jones, Gavin Birch, um, Harvey Elliott, Sabasly, Trent, you know, even the young, the young guys coming up, Bobby Clark, everybody... Plays the same position. Mm -hmm. And Maka is a sure starter on that left side eight. So we have four or five guys competing for one position. So probably going to a back three would not be such a bad idea. But I think we need to address we need a young centre back and we need a right winger. Oh, back here, Kia, who does? Uh, That's a good question. That's a very good question. That is a good question. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? I probably will take Mohamed Kudos. Bakayoko is talented, but I've seen Kudos in the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and he is a, he's a winger. The problem with, with West Ham is Kudos play the same position as... Um, Diaz is um, like... I'm not saying, man, like... Um, yeah. Bowen. 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 Yeah. Right. So he has to be when he, when both of them plays, he's actually in the midfield or maybe uh, you know more attacking ten. And West Ham is so defensive sometimes that you know you can't really see. But I would probably actually I would take either. But if you give me the option to take one right now, because I've seen Kudos and I know what he can do. You know, because there's a lot of young, talented players like Bakayoko that turned out to be a flop. <laughs> so, uh, the guy that I really like was Pedro Neto, but I would not touch him because of his injury record. Yeah, well, Pedro mm. Neto, is, I think it is a, mm. a shame for him because he probably does deserve a big club move at some point. But yeah. again, his injuries record is not is not saying much much for him. Um, apparently, Alonso signed a three year deal to become next local manager. Consists. Yeah, and then someone else has said, no, he's been offered a free year deal. Can anyone uh, pick up on that at all? I don't know if it, I've not read anything about that. Unless <laughs> it's come out this. That's, 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 that's the first, like, like, that's 10, the first I'm minutes. hearing of it just now. But uh, if, you're get that, so, yeah. if you get that out, out please uh, make sure we get it. Forget straight to talk, fake news and clicks. We said this earlier, didn't we, William, about it's, people will be looking for clicks. People can buy blue ticks and they can have what less than me followers. You know what I'm saying? 500 followers and they'll get a blue tick and they can put something out and people believe it because it's a blue tick. And it's all about making the money as well online. 
Uh, one player that I did mention would be a good place for was would be Kiesa. Kiesa again is injury problems as well with Kiesa. Mm-hmm. We've been looking at Kiesa for a few years now, and I think we, if we were going to move for Kiesa, I think we'd have moved him for him quite yeah, a bit ago. Yeah. From honest, we should. I don't think we would have been waiting this long for, for Kiesa, even you know, because. I don't think he'd be as much as 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 a as a bargain as what he was like a few years ago. I, I don't want him though. <laughs> no, I think he's very talented, but again, it's the injury prone record. The injury record, record yeah. the um, yeah, there is a name that is that is popping up all over my Twitter feed. Um, with Mbappe going to Madrid, um, Rodrigo, he he yeah. because Rodrigo's camp is now complaining that he is the is the odd man out. Because Rodrigo is primarily uh, is a, a left winger, but he has to be playing on the right because of Vinny Jr. So now with Mbappe going to Real Madrid, um, and then Rodrigo, Rodrigo may go in there as well. Yes, so yes. Fine. So, but uh, it is said that Madrid would listen to offers, but they want hundred million euros. He's twenty three, I think. He's very talented. But mm. I think he is also uh, better um, on the left side, which we are stuck over there. I don't know what you guys think about him. Would you spend the money? Um, if 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 we sold Diaz or Diaz happened to leave, then yeah, I would buy him as a replacement. Yeah, I think we'll get quite a bit for Diaz. If we were to sell Diaz. Because I think those reports coming out, his dad sp- spoke about him wanting to go to Spain again. I'm, I, I don't really, I'm not really kind of approving of that. Because it's only because it's well, we've got a season going on right now, we we don't really need that that kind of press. Obviously, if he wants to leave, fair enough, you can deal with that in private. But yeah, unless Diaz leaves, then yeah, I'll take Rodrigo as a replacement. But I don't think we would buy him mm. and keep Diaz because if you look how FSG works, I don't think. I said it time and time before. I don't I don't personally look at prices no more no more because mm. prices every single price of players are so Agreed. out of line and so overpriced. It's ridiculous. Agreed. And it's not fair on the players then, because the players are getting put on a pedestal where they're this price, and really not they're not asked to be that price, and they're not going to perform at that price. Even Declan Rice right now, Declan Rice has been one of the best players in the Premier League. He's still not hundred million pound yet, but it doesn't mean that he's been he's been a flop because it was hundred million pound. Do you know what I'm saying? He's been one of the best players in the Premier League this season, so it's not fair on on to put price on. You know, it's not my money, so I'm not paying for it anyway. So if we were to get Rodrigo at eighty million pounds. I would be like uh, eighty million pounds too much. You know what I'm saying? I'd see, I'd wait to see him on pitch, and if he starts to proven his worth on the pitch, where Van Dijk did at eighty million pounds, where Alison Becker has done at seventy five million pounds, then that's I'm, I'm happy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So start performing on the pitch, and that's that's how it is. I mean, Nunes was eighty five million pounds, and people will call him a flop because eighty five million pounds would have been the same, say the same thing if he was twenty million pounds at the time. You know what I'm saying? When he was playing poor. Would people be saying, "Oh, what a flop!" Because if twenty million pounds, they wouldn't. It's the price tag, and the price tag is not not the player's fault. And that's the same with every sort of player that goes anywhere. I mean, Enzo Fernandez, fantastic player, by the way. Enzo Fernandez probably being one of the best players for Chelsea this season, but he's it's not decent. a hundred million pound player. He's a very good player, but it's not his fault that he's hundred million pound. That's just what they paid for him. Um. Again, like William says here, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share to people, share to the uh, Liverpool fans, share to any football fan if they want to come on and chat about football. So we do chat about other clubs as well at some points. But yes, please share and please like the like the video tonight. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We are over ten thousand subs. We're trying to get aim for fifteen twenty thousand next for our our um our target. Big injury news tonight. Um, away from transfers, away from manager talk. Um, Andy Robertson, Gavin Birch, and Nunes injury news. Andy Robertson took a big, big knock the night for Scotland. Uh, went off early in the game. Very, very scary times it was. Uh, having, having seen him hobble off, I think the worst was feared at, at first. But according to Lewis Steele for the Mail today. That is just an impact injury, which is fantastic news, which means, Paul, that it will be a few days rather than weeks. I know Alonso, I know Robertson appeared much in recent weeks with Gomez covering that side and Robertson coming back from an injury before. How important is Robbo going into the final stages of, of the season? Robbo is important, obviously, because 
is still a, is still the best left back we have. Um, and the business end of the, se of the season is really all hands on deck. You know, the manager needs to have the luxury of, of a full squad to um, to choose from. But we have decent cover over there. So whilst we don't want him to not be available, but I'm not too bothered right now because Gomez has proven that he can be a capable left back um, in situations like this. And Simicas is not bad either. Simicas is not as defensively sound as, as Gomez over there, but Simicas offered you more going forward. Going forward so yeah. so yeah. obviously in a situation where we have 20 minutes to go and we need a goal, then you could see Simicas replacing Gomez. You know, if we're leading, then Gomez just stay over there. So, what's wrong with know, Gomez, Paul? If we need a goal, what's wrong with Gomez? Well, if let's look at his track record. <laughs> 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 I've I've been following football Liverpool for over twenty years. I've, any of you guys can think of a professional footballer who has played as many games as Joe Gomez without <laughs> a go, without a scoring a goal in his entire life. That's a not, good question. Yeah, I've got to look that up. Ex Harrogate, ex Harrogate, excluding Harrogate goalkeeper. Got close, didn't he? Got yeah. close. But they can't the end. Because he has never scored a goal in his life. No. At any level. And then Connor Bradley comes in and scores with him pretty much his debut. Yes. Connor Bradley, <laughs> Connor Bradley's more of a comfortable going forward, though. You can kind of see that with Once the ball is feet. Kwanzaa, huh? um, he's, well, a, he's a centre back and he yeah, has scored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Van Dijk has scored, I don't know, how many goals for Liverpool? Two dozen? Alison Becker scored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alison Becker's special. He's a rare breed, <laughs> Alison. You don't get goalies really scoring these days. That was, that was like a special, special moment. So, you know, <clears throat> I, I don't think Gomez is the guy I'm going to put on if I need a goal. <laughs> 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 you know, but because, I mean, I've. 10 years in football and not even a goal, but you know what? Let's hope that his first goal is a big goal for us. You know, a game that we need to win, Gomez in the 80th minute, one nothing, boom. <laughs> you know, that would be a story. But have, coming back to the topic, though, um, Robo is kind of losing his influence on the team in terms of his performance this season. Uh, so... If he has to be away for a game or two, I would not sweat. Yeah. You know, I want to be kind to him because for the last couple of years, I, th I thought he was top two, top three, the left back in world football, you know. But, you know, the thing about playing, playing that position, playing fullback, where you need speed, it's one of those positions that age catch up on you very quickly. Yeah. If you are playing center back, you can play into your mid to high 30s. If you're playing fullback, the traditional fullback where you play, where you bomb down the wing and you have to take on take on the wingers and the opponents, it's you get can get old pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So if Robert needs to leave this year, you know, I would wish him all the well, but I wouldn't be crying. <clears throat> and Willie says here, but to be fair, Gomez is only eight, last 18 months has been going on the goal hunt before that he can set the job. There's a reason why it's on the last 18 months he's going on the uh, goal hunt, I'm um, afraid, Willie, because have you seen his shooting? <laughs> um, there's a reason why he didn't do that for the nine years previous, because he couldn't shoot. Anyway, yeah, like Paul said, I, I hope Gomez does come up with like the match winning goal to win the Premier League. That, that'd be, that would be like the perfect story of, of, of the end of a Klopp era. <laughs> If I'm honest, um, but Robert is a is a tricky one because Robert is one of the best left backs I've ever seen in this league, up there with Ashley Cole, up there with Patrice Evra, those sort of players. Dennis Irwin, definitely top five left back I've seen in this league. Def top, maybe even top five full, full back in this league I've seen. But like Paul just said, edge edge catches you, you quick, mm -hmm. especially in those positions that you relied on that speed, you relied on that fitness. Mm -hmm. Midfield and and, and um, like defence midfield and centre back are a bit different because you can you can sort of sit back and play more intelligently rather than rely on your physicality, which which Virgil's done a little bit more this season. Yeah, he's lost a yeah. bit of a step in his pace, but he's more in, you know he's keeping his intelligence there and keeping his in, his awareness of where he is on the pitch. Mm. Full box a bit different. Full box, especially in the cop system. Your 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 yeah. down that wing. Your ball is like the most important position in cops. In mm. cops. 
And and Rabo Rabo is the least versatile player in the in the team. Mm. Rabo can play left back and nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> right? Left back and very left back. Yeah, left yeah. back and right. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, Gomez can play anywhere along the back line. Can play even tries look at as a number six. As, as a six, yeah. You know, but Rabo left back or is left behind. <laughs> and the energy that puts Rabo, the energy that, puts, that Rabo puts in as well. I mean, just the 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 clip that you see of him when he's shutting down all the players that time. When he's putting that sort of effort in year in year out, then injuries are going to start catching up, and age does catch up a lot quicker than what Virgil was doing when he's practically walking back. I think there's a reason why Virgil does walk back. I think he wants to just play a little longer. I think that's it. It's not laziness. I think he just wants mm-hmm. to play longer, right, um, right? Because he's not out like Robert at the moment. That's the thing. Um, Gavin Birch and Nunes are also okay. Cons Lewis Steele, Reese. Gavin Birch has been at a tough time this season. He's a very, very talented player. And, and when he mm. does play, he has shown glimpses of what he can do. Yeah. Glimpses can only get yourself far, can't they, Reese, in a, in a Liverpool team? Do you think he can nail down a start for Liverpool at some point? I think he can. I think we still need to give him time for his first season. So he's still kind of gelling. Obviously, I agree, he's only shown flashes. Um, but I think I think he will grow into that. And obviously, when we get a new manager as well, I think I think that will help um, a lot. How important is it though that these players are getting back fit? Curtis Jones is back in contention as well, Conta a Conta reports as well. So these players coming back at the vital time, Reese. I mean, no, I think yeah, I think it's very the important. Coming need, up now. It is we the, need the the all of our players because we can't we can't just rely on the young players. Even though the young players have done tremendous, we need all our senior players back. We need to be able to have like a rotation, a mixture of players. So it's very like a big boost that we've got Nunes and Graham Birch coming back. I think. I don't know Klopp, uh, I saw some video about Klopp, uh, someone asking him something, um, saying how long until Trent. I think Trent is this, hopefully the Man United game. Alisson, I think he said something about two and a half weeks, three weeks. And he even said Jota is ahead of schedule as well. So, you know, I think it's a big boost to try and get all, all of our first team. In the usual the season, Reece, last like last season and the season before, the reason why injuries have killed us because the, the people have stepped up behind yeah. Yeah, and yeah. this season we seem to be seeing a bit different to that, and that's yeah. why it's important to buy players because you need refreshment, you need players that's come come in there with a new mindset and a new attitude of like, no, I'm fighting for this place. Mm. So when you know when like Nunes has Jot has been out, Diaz has stepped up a little bit more in his, yeah. in his performances a little bit more. You know, Nunes has started stepping up in terms of goals as well. Nunes recently, yeah. mm. so mm-hmm. we're not missing Jota as much. And again, with like Gomez being injured, or Matip getting injured, for example, Quanza stepped, stepped up. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. To the point where he says, I'm taking over Matip. I'm not here to play no game. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, attitude yeah. that I love in the well, I liked, I liked, I liked when he said that. I didn't see no disrespect. Mm. I know there were some fans that thought that was a bit, he was a it's bit not. cheeky. But for me, I like that because it shows that you have something about you. I mean, so, yeah. I'm a little worried about Gavin Birch, though. Okay. Go on, Paul. Okay. I'm slightly worried about Gavin Birch. No, there's no doubt that he's extremely talented. Mm. But the reason we have him is because he was pouting on the bench at Bayern because he, he was complaining about lacking game time, which is okay because as a young, talented player, you want to play. Yeah. Now, even though he's talented, he, right now to me, He's not a starter based on what we have right now. Yeah. Plus, I think he's behind Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott in terms of midfielders on the bench. So, when I said I'm worried about him, what if another year, year and a half, is not getting the minutes that he wants mm-hmm. because of all of these players in front of him? But I think he's coming back hopefully next next season. Whether he's a six or an eight, he might be in the team. Mm. So, is Gavin Birch going to? Is, does he have that in him to fight for his position and to say, "I want to start," not by saying it, but by performance? Mm. Or is he going to stay on the bench and sulk because he's not going to start over Maka? He's not going to start at the six. Yeah. Is, and if Trent comes into the midfield. Mm. That's another pos- that's another player for that position. So I am hoping that he just said, you know what, I am going to fight for my position. Mm. I am going to start 
because you can't drop me because of how I'm performing. But I am not sure if he has that in him. I, he looks to me like the kind of player that needs a manager to put an arm around him and to hug him and to say, you know, we're going to give you some games. Just go and show us what you can do. Because honestly, I would love to see Harvey Elliott get a lot of game time because that guy is talented. So I don't know where Gavin Bird sits, you know, among all of these guys because it's going to be tough to find spots in that midfield for people who want to start, especially um, going forward with all of these young players. Everybody wants to start. So I don't know. I am a little worried about Gavin Bird just because of that. I think Paul made, Paul made a good point in our chat the other day as well regarding, like, game time because mm -hmm. all these all these you know in our chat people are putting out that saying like uh oh this guy's coming through this guy's coming when they're going to play though when mm -hmm. are they going to play there's only so many thoughts we've already gone through like we've got so many eights we've got grand bits that play eight McAllister can play eight Sobers like can play there um curtis jones can play there have elliott sort of coming in and out of there but mm -hmm. Tetich, for me is a number eight you know you got mcconnell coming through you got Bobby, Bobby Clark, Clark, Clark yeah. six, but Bobby Clark coming through. Mm. So Cavalio. when are we going to get minutes? Oh yeah, Cavalio as well. Cavalio. Cavalio's yeah. going to come back at some point when he's a number ten hour winger. We yeah. seem to have bought like loads of left wingers and loads of eights. But with <laughs> Edwards was... coming in, I I think he's going to be people, ruthless. Some people will get sold, even one or two youngsters potentially, because everyone can't play. Yeah. Everyone can't play. We've got quite a lot of players in midfield. Too many. Even with mm. Champions League football, Reece, even with Champions League football, and mm. that's going to come next season, we're going to play more games. And it's going to be more games than Champions League, by the way, because I, I can't stand that format how it's, how it's changing to. But mm. even then, you're still pushing on to... You've got too many midfielders mm. in, in one position. Those positions. This is why I think a number six is important, because we've only got really Endo that can play there, and possibly McConnell coming through, and McAllister covers there. McAllister at six. I'm glad we've worked this out, by the way, which I've been saying about for months and months and months. That is not we have, yes. You agree. Um, in pushing forward now, it's given a problem for the rest of them, McAllister, because he's, he's outperforming anyone in the number eight. Well, one solution we could have, you know, if if um, if if Luis Diaz is sold, I think Sabasly would do very well on that right wing, on that left wing. Um. Because, yes, he plays in midfield and he's very industrious. He's more box to box. But I've seen him playing for his national team. And he strikes me as a natural left winger, Savasla. He, he doesn't have great speed, but he's by no means slow. He's, he's faster than mm -hmm. Gakpo and, mm -hmm. and Jata. Right? Uh, I would love to see Savasla, you know, in the front, front three at least an experiment because I think he would score a ton of goals. Mm. So, and then that would free up the midfield for somebody else. You know, when they want to give that spot to Jones, you could have Jones, um, Gravin Birch and Elliot fight for that one spot. Mm. That's, a, that's something that we can, that we could even consider. And then what are we going to do with Trent? <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> interesting. It's nice to have options though, isn't it? That's what I will say. It's nice to have, I rather have options than no options at all. That's what <laughs> it's nice to not having Milan on the other hand. England yeah. navigating yeah. John Linton yeah. in it, and Milner. <laughs> Every single exactly, season. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Imagine if, imagine if Liverpool actually decided to buy players. You know, when we should have bought players, mm. it would have been, it would have been, it would have been an interesting one. Um, and they said, hey, I'm starting to believe Alonso may, may want to stay at Liverpool and then continue like that, which is, which is fair enough actually. And yeah, that's a good, very good point made actually because. It's only at the start of the project with Villa Guzman. It's only his first season. So people are expecting him just to leave like that off, off one good season and then him not want to carry on with a project with mm. Villa Guzman, if that makes sense, just because one of his teams has come up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, mm. you don't know what's in Alonso's mind. Does he want to stay there for another couple of years? Does he think he's ready yet? Which is another thing that I've thought about because Gerard has always said, I'll never become a Liverpool manager until I know I'm ready to become a Liverpool manager. And if he's never ready to become a Liverpool manager, he won't become a Liverpool manager. He said that himself because he puts Liverpool first before himself in terms of wanting success. He, he won't want to go there knowing that he's going to fail, knowing that he's not good enough. I think, gonna I think he's going to leave. I think he's going to leave. 
Um, both... Jota misses big games, which is critical. Yes, definitely Jadon Carter. He's a, he's a big, big miss in, in those big games because when you're not putting the chances away, you need that's someone that can put a chance away in, and that's I exactly think, what he does. I think we've missed Jota in the Man City game. We've missed Jota yeah. quite a lot in terms of clinicalness in the City game. <clears throat> um, Stephen here says Alonso will likely be the choice. Uh, agreed on for a while. Unfortunately, it won't be announced for a while. Well, again, it won't be announced for a while anyway because the season's still going on, and respectively, both teams are going for the league. And so that, which, yeah, don't want to throw the seasons into turmoil. It was back. I see Salah sold this summer in Saudi. I hope Salah is not sold. If Salah sold, if Salah is getting sold this summer, it's simply because. It's simply bit to, to fund other transfers. That's the only reason why Salah will get sold this summer. It's to simply fund transfers, and that's FSG but, strategy to sell. But, no, why? Why would we need to do that? We still have the hundred million that we offered for Caicedo. <laughs> Don't get me started, Paul. Don't get me started. <laughs> it's gonna be a long night if you're gonna start going on that. <laughs> he has more freedom on the national team compared to Paul. Um, an offer for over sixty million, and Diaz has gone. Um, what would you take for Diaz? Because again, Diaz, I'm a big, big fan of Diaz, and I haven't since we've started him. Uh, since we bought him, when we bought him, he was a different player. He was an absolute player where he wasn't part of the system yet. He sort of played how he wanted to play, mm. and he got the best out of Manny as well when Manny went forward. But this season is becoming really predictable. Until like the City game and the recent games. Where he stepped up a little bit. That City game was unbelievable, by the way. If you play like that every single season, every single week, or at least half of that every single week, I wouldn't have a problem with him at all. But it's becoming predictable. It's getting it's getting up to the, the box and he's either cutting inside or just passing it away. Yeah. And that I don't know if you've ever seen a clip the other night for the assist he had for Columbia where he cut on the left and he crossed it in with his left foot. I've never seen him cross with the left yeah. foot. In my life at Liverpool, he's been here for a couple of years and he's not crossed like that with left foot. Why mm. can't he do that at Liverpool? Maybe the system's different, maybe the instructions are that different. Could be, that more. could be it, that's what I'm mm. saying. And this is why it's frustrating because it's not getting the best out of him. If he can mm. do that, if he can cut like that, I, I wouldn't have a problem because when he's cutting inside all the time, defenders are reading him and they're blocking his shots or they're just tackling him simply as, as that. And if you could cut outside like that and use the left foot sometimes to cross in like that. It's comfy. It, it it creates space as well. It creates more space than that because defenders will not know where to go. And it, it really fit that clip of him doing that for Columbia really frustrating me. I'm like, where has this been? You've been here for two years, I've not seen you cross it your left foot once. Paul Diaz, where do you stand with him? I would you accept a sixty million pound bid or whatever, or would you say, nah, just let him be let him play the play that he wants to be what what he wants to be? Um actually if I get 60 or 70 million offer for Lewis Diaz, I would seriously consider accepting it. Because even though he has not come out and said anything or asked to be transferred, asked to leave, all of these little utterances from his entourage, from his, his father, I believe that there's something there. Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and also, Diaz is one of those guys that need to either start or we sell it. He's, so like, what, by, what I mean by that is a guy like Cody or, or, or Jota, these guys can stay on the bench and can come in and give you a good 30, 40 minutes, give you a goal when you need it. Luis Diaz reminds me of Martinelli at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. A lot of flash, but the end product is not there most of the time. Mm -hmm. So if we can sell Diaz for decent money and can use that money to upgrade, because... Let's say, for example, we need to put another 20 million on that and get a guy like Rafael Leo, which I really, really like. Mm. That would be a big upgrade. It, and Leo is like about three, four years younger than Lucha. Lucha. Mm. So I am not actively shopping Diaz. I would not actively shop in, if that's what makes sense. But if somebody if comes in, yeah, yeah. if an offer came in and it's reasonable and he wants to go, I, I, I would have a problem. Because we have enough players can cover his position. In terms of what we have in the team or if we need to upgrade. So, you know. You're, you're, not, hungry, you're, you're not hungry. You're not, you're not really particularly hungry looking out for yes. food. But if someone came to your house and offered you a burger, you'd be like, all right. 
Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Andy exactly. says here, is the reason for multi-club models sending all academy players over the first team experience? I get that, Andy, but we're sending them over to the first team experience. We're not guaranteeing first team when they come back either. That's the problem. It's not about sending people out on loan. would have been Chelsea. You know what I'm saying? We're sending all these players out on loan and they're coming back and then we've still got the same amount of players. Because we haven't got really much older players. We're on the back end of McCarthy's young, you know, Sobber's is young. So they're coming back and they're still fighting for the same position that mm-hmm. they're not going to get. So we forget Ben Dork is coming back too. Ben Dork's coming back too, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And, and, and Tyler Martin, Tyler Martin is, is absolutely smashing it at home. But is he, is he guaranteed to come back and say, I'm fighting for a place? He's, he's got Anchor so many Valio people. Well. Even though we mentioned him already, Anka Valio is coming back. Mm-hmm. Well, so, yeah. And again, with Cavalio, does it suit a far free free system? Again, depends on what formation we play. Because yeah. if, if Alonso comes in, we play number ten. Cavalli yeah, I think he suits, it'll suit number ten, but four three three. That's quite uh, tricky. If it was number ten, I'd allow Elliot and Cavalli to fight that for number ten. Mm. Or Sobersly. Or Sobersly. Yeah. I'd have yeah. three of them to fight for it. And we don't even need Verts. I, I like Verts, and if we were to get Verts, I'd be like, "Yup, that's an upgrade. I'll get that. I'm happy with that." But I still think Elliot, Cavalli, and Sobersly can fight for ten if we were to play a ten. Uh, Jotai may get sold due to be injured prone. You need to understand now, Edward works why FSG brought him in. FSG brought him in because um, he can make their sell to buy work, and that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. They, they, they don't want to put more and more money in it. They're concentrating on now the golf venture and the NBA venture. Uh, they, that's why they brought Edward in because they, they, can't, they can't bother being concentrated on Liverpool anymore. They've got so much going on elsewhere. I don't think Liverpool's even on the mind at the moment. Um, again, like William said, hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new as well. Please share with your friends as well. Um, I don't know what I was just saying. I've seen the word uh, no smell of that fire, Arthur, no knickers. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know I, think it's, that, but... I think it's unfair to, to say Jota is injury prone, though. You don't think? Um, because, okay, let me tell you who's injury prone. Pro, I'd say he's picking up quite a lot, but it's not, it's not the same injury. Because if you look at the last couple of injuries, it's just on for a bad tackle. Yeah, yeah, Someone to drop bad. on his foot. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a guy like Michael Olise or, or Pedro Neto who just yeah, yeah. go down with nobody within five feet of them. That's mm. injury prone. <laughs> but mm. I, I get the point, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it could have a knock-in effect. The, I mean, this injury it was a bad injury, so it could have a knock-in effect uh, going into future mm. forward. I mean, I, I mean, Van Dijk can't come... Van Dijk had a huge injury. And he's not really been injured since... Really, yeah, yeah. it was a few games out, but not massively. So they can re- recover from things like this. Before we do go, boys, um, Brighton game. It's a <laughs> huge, huge game. It's, I know it's Brighton and it's home, mm. and we should be winning it, but it's a huge, huge game because the game after is City, City Arsenal. And mm. what we need to do is not and give them pressure. Yeah, we've got to apply some pressure. Yeah. We Get need to put something there, and if we drop points, those two will be licking the lips. And yes. it gives both of them a chance to say, hang on a second, Liverpool are serious here in this, in this type of race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to put a marker down and say, we're not going anywhere soon. We're now behind that. Yeah. What marker has... we down for? What marker are we putting down on Sunday? Brighton has been our bogey team, you know. Mm. You know, Especially last year. Oh. Yeah. So, but we're in a position this year Mm. that we have not been in the last couple of years, in that we not only have a proper starting eleven, but we have also quality off the bench. Right? So that is why I believe most of these mid-table teams coming to Anfield will be leaving empty-handed. Because we have enough options. Uh, and, and Brighton, they are allergic to clean sheets. They give up a lot of goals. So I would be surprised if we don't put three or four past them because their back line is, is not good. Lewis Dunk, I think he's at, I don't know why he's playing for England because he looks like a <laughs> like a There's a reason home. why he's playing for England. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know the answer to that. Don't be silly. You know the answer to that. <laughs> so, so and I, you know, in this situation at like this weekend, I always prefer when we played when we play first. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Because we play first and win, then I can sit back and relax and watch an yeah. Arsenal City game. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, if we lose, then I don't want to watch any more football for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that completely. But the I, TV's I, going I, off I, 
Yeah, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna. We're gonna turn them over. Um, someone said here. Well, I was gonna go back for it. He says here. Uh, where was it now? Um, just gonna find it. Oh, there you go. Uh, Shashin said there. Deserve will be doing everything to his best effort. It's a bit like a. It's a bit like an audition, isn't it? For Deserve to Edwards on Sunday. So he might mm. want to prove a point. Again, that's true. That's true. I didn't Brighton, play good football. Right, they do true. play good football. The problem is with Brighton is their attack lets them down massively. And when they rely on Danny Welbeck, mm-hmm. and if Evan Ferguson doesn't start scoring, then no, there's not many out there that score. Matoma doesn't really score much. He does create a lot, but he doesn't really score much. What about that that um, Brazilian guy that they have there? What's it? Joe Pedro. He seems to be a decent. Oh yeah, Joe Pedro. Player. Yeah, he's the main one in terms of shots. He will get a lot of shots off. He's, the, he's definitely the one to stop. If you were out to stop Brighton on Sunday, so yeah, mm. they've got very talented players, and you know, the reason why they're in Europe for a reason. There's a reason mm. why they're doing okay in Europe as well. So uh, they're out now, aren't they? Uh, they're, I'm sure they're out. Didn't the Roma? Didn't yeah, they they're Roma, yeah, yeah, they're, Roma, they're, Roma, they're, they're still yeah. battered Roma in the second leg. They're just too far behind. But mm. the pressure is on the floor on Sunday, mm. and of course, if we don't win, then. Both teams, I think both Arsenal and City will be happy with a draw if Liverpool don't win. Because it doesn't make a difference then to the league table. For me personally, I think both teams, I think if Liverpool win, it puts pressure on then both of them to win because they need to keep up with Liverpool, either one of them. I think if Liverpool lose or draw, I think both will be happy with a draw, Man City or Arsenal, just because Liverpool drop points as well. Um Again, Chris has said here we should be beating Brighton at home considering performances. We should be beating a lot of teams, but sometimes we don't. We should have beaten Luton, but we didn't. So, it's, the, the, unfortunately, football doesn't work like that. Should doesn't work like that. We need to start from the traps, don't we, Reed? We need to start from minute one, yeah. get the job done early and take the pressure off ourselves. That's- that's sign we've been struggling with, don't we? Starting game slow. So hopefully we can come out the traps and start quick. I do think we're going to win, but because of the international break and then players having to come back in, I don't I think... I, yeah, I think it's going to be a bit closer. I think maybe a 2-1 or even a 3-2. Nah. Liverpool kind of like to concede and stuff, potentially. Paul, you still think smash? Yeah, we're going to smash them. Because mm. remember, you know, even though we are equal on points with Arsenal... Mm. Goal difference is also an extra point, mm. <laughs> right? So we need to start put away some of these teams. We have mm. Sheffield United coming up next week. We need to be putting five or six past them mm. because right now I think Arsenal goal difference is like about five, six or seven ahead of ours. Yeah. So we need to be ruthless. We need to just go at these teams and just score some goals. So, and when you get teams who are so fragile at the back, like like Brighton um, and Sheffield, we need to put three and four and five past them. Because Arsenal are putting three and four and five and six Mm. past these teams. (laughs) Right? So why can't we? And I believe we have a better front three than Arsenal. So we need need to... We don't. We, we, I hate when we have a goal or two and then we just keep on passing the ball. We need to yes, just continue yeah. to score. We're not goals. as relentless as we used to be when no. we was when we were fighting for the title before. We were relentless before. We used to put yeah. teams out of bed. Um, yes. I mean, like the Nottingham Forest game, Paul. Mm-hmm. We should be putting two, three, four, five past them. Yeah, we and we relied on literally the last kick of the game, last header of the mm-hmm. game to win the game. We can't afford that anymore. No, we can't. You know, you're playing, because, with, you're playing with the game, then you're playing with chance of luck. Because we have seen this, the, the champion, the, the Premier League decided on goal difference already. Mm-hmm. So you know, goal difference can be an extra point. Mm-hmm. So we have to score some goals. Um, William says, "Hey, no, no, no need to worry about goal difference. Won't come into play. Whoever wins will be win one point to six to seven points. Uh, six to seven points is a big shot there, William." Six seven mm-hmm. points is a big gap between the three of us right now. I think I think this is genuinely one of the best title races I've seen for a while. Yeah, I think all three are genuine title contenders. I know a lot of people put Arsenal down, but they are fucking good. Mm. Sometimes yeah, you got to I sit think... back and, and praise when you, when praise is due. Arsenal are good, and Arsenal will have yeah. learned from last season. I think the last day of the season is going to mean a lot. Going to mean a lot for the Premier League, for the top of the league, and the bottom of the league. 
So we'll be playing Wolves at home, and Wolves might be about, I don't know, maybe 9, 10, so maybe I've nothing much to play for. So hopefully we don't need much, but the last day is going to be massive. Mm. We're looking at, I mean, City can steamroll teams whenever they want at some points, and they'll go on, the City can go on and run that. It's, it's hard to keep up with. And Arsenal are looking formidable as well. So I think, I don't, I don't even look at this game as being a big desire in terms of the title for Arsenal City. I just look at it as, as Liverpool cost you on your job because we've got some tough games coming up. We've got some tough away games coming up. I mean, Everton are crap, but it's not an easy Merseyside derby when, when at the best of times. But when they're fighting down there, we're fighting up here. It's going to be a tough one anyway. We've got Villa away, not easy. We've got Tottenham at home. I know Tottenham are, are, are poor as well, but again, that could be a dodgy one. We've got, we uh, to go to West, we've got West Ham away. We need yeah, to go to Old Trafford. Old Trafford yeah. And we have Villa away. We've got Fulham away. Fulham's not an easy place to go. These are tough games coming up. So we just need to, like Paul says, when we can get these games, we can smash teams, make sure we are smashing these teams. Because not only is it good for the goal difference, but it, it only does the confidence and it just the best it can. Therefore, moving on to the next, next game with more confidence. It's definitely the best title race I've seen for a little bit of time and I'm excited to be in it yeah, again finally after after years of saying please come and buy some midfielders with bars and midfielders and all of a sudden we're in this it's funny how sound feels work isn't it guys <laughs> thank you everyone for for, for the night and thank you uh, Paul and Reese for joining me tonight That's I hope great. you do uh, like the channel subscribe to the channel like the video share with your friends share with your enemies share with whoever you like to share with thank you everyone and have a great weekend <laughs>